everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and we're going to be working on Tetris. We're going to finish up the very last piece of our game over, and then we're going to shift over to actually scoring the, um, the difficult piece, the piece where we need to merge the rows and, and basically um, erase those rows and then increase the score. So let's go ahead and get started. As we finished up last time, we had done a push redirect to the game over, and then we'd done a couple of different views. We had the game over view, and we had the playing view. Well, one of the things that we did is um, we didn't really properly address the score. So, you know, socket assigns is not going to be here. This is a new redirect. So, probably the best thing to do is just to pull this out of params, and we could pass it in that way. Um, this is just kind of a low-tech way. So we're going to just set take a param score. And so this can actually just come in as a URL parameter. And so I'm going to go to the playing view. Um, so that's the view, and I want the live view. Okay, so this is, um, this is just a redirect. I could pass this right like that. And so I could, this is in the socket. The custom data data is in a science. Then we have a game and a score in there. And so that should do what we want. So let's see if we if we get the behavior that we're looking at. Okay, so the game is not in there anymore because we basically shifted that to score. And so um, we can change this to your score, right? And so now this is just score. So that's a cleaner view. I like that, okay. So now let's play again. Okay, so we're crashing. So what's happening here? Okay, so this is saying um, handle event three is undefined or private. So did we do we have the play here? Yeah. So oh, okay. So basically, we haven't implemented the um, handle event the play here. So we can do that now. So this is the same thing. You can basically grab this code and drop it in here. But I bet that I didn't save that before my last commit, but this will work just fine. Okay. So yeah, so this is going, remember to slow this down, huh? And so this should stack up to the top. And now we have a game over and we have our score. So that's doing exactly what we want. And this is looping back to the beginning. So I think that we have a working game overflow. We're going to stack them up, play in Tetris, move, rotate, and we are good to go. Okay, so let's take this, this much, and we'll tie this off for now. And this is, uh, so add score on final view yeah okay so notice that we're on checkpoint 15 and that's where we'll be for the rest of this video and now that we have things working okay so some of these are, are rejected because because of the way that i've stacked these to make them easy to um to teach from but um so let's go ahead and shift gears and we'll shift gears to actually what's going to happen when, when we add, when, when we have to stack up the row. So let's remind ourselves of the overall flow. So one of the nice things about the design so far is that we're basically spending most of our time in this logical model. And so the piece that we're interested in is when we're moving down. And so the down is we do... We do the move down or merge, right? And this merge piece is the thing that we're actually interested in doing, right? So, so if so, I merge. So basically, I'm showing the tetromino, which means that we basically um, add the points with the um, add the points that are kind of moved and rotated to the right place, and then I map over them. And um, I map over them to basically build the junkyard, right? So we're merging this, this, in, we're merging the old technology 
into the junkyard like this. So this is this is what's happening when I'm merging. I'm basically taking these in. And so what needs to happen here is I'm going to have to collapse the rows. And um, so if there are any rows that are completed all the way from the left to the right, I'm going to have to collapse the rows and um, and basically have expanding scores for every single row that the that the user has added. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so let's look at what our program has to do. So if we are playing Tetris and we complete a row by maybe dropping in the blue one or the orange one at the far left, now we have a row on the bottom that's complete. And what needs to happen is we have to clear this and then collapse the other ones to the bottom. So that's effectively what we're going to have to do. So there are a couple of steps in doing this. The first step is that we need to identify the rows that are complete. And then the second step is we need to collapse the completed rows. And then the third thing that we need to do is actually improve our score. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so let's open up the code base. So we are in this area where we need to where we need to do the merge. And then the one thing that we haven't done yet we haven't done a we haven't found the rows and then we're going to basically so we're going to start this with the with the basically the game and all we really need in this function is the junkyard because the junkyard has all of the ones that we've merged into the bottom. So, so we're going to find these rows and then figure out what to do with them in a bit. But so the shape of the junkyard, this basically looks like key value pairs where the keys are X and Y, and then there's the shape, but we actually don't need the shape. So this can actually be points. without the shapes. And so um, I might I might pass in, for example, a list of like find junkyard. And this is going to get a, a data structure that looks like this one one and then and then two one. And then so on and so forth. Um, but it's probably going to be called something like this, find junkyard, and then I'm going to take the, the game.junkyard, and then I'm going to pipe that into map.keys, uh, right? Because all we really need is the keys here. And so all the only thing that this piece will do is take those keys and find the y indexes that are complete. That means that we have x, all of the x from one to 10. So I think that what I'll do is I'll start with the points and then I'll basically group those. I'll create a list of all the points and then I'll filter those points by the ones that are that have a size of 10. So let's go ahead and start this and then I could say um, enum dot group by and group by let's take a look at what that does okay so let's say i have integers i want to group by things that are um, greater than two and, and less than equal to turn to two so enum dot group by and then i'll say i'll build this this um, capture which is a function, and I'll say at one is greater than two. Oh, I, I need to uh, have the list here. Okay, and so the ones that are false, these are not greater than two um, are in this bucket, and the ones that are true are in this bucket. So what I'm gonna get is a list of values. And for me, these are going to be, um, these are gonna be y, um, y values, and these are going to be um, lists of the points. 
that, that satisfy those values. So I'm going to say group by. So this is junkyard points. And I'm going to group that by. Um, so these are in the shape x, y, right? So I want to group those by element 1, right? So element the tuple and 1. So this is basically going to give me the y value here. So this is a function capture. So now I have something where the keys are the y values and the values are list of the x values. So what I can do is map over that you know, dot map and essentially what we're going to have here is a, a function that has the key which is the y and this has a list and then what I want to do is is um, translate that to um, or you know what? I could filter this, couldn't I? Um, I don't care about the Y and the list. Length of the list is equal to 10 exactly. Right? Um, so now I can take this thing and I can enum.map over it. And so now what I have is um, is something that looks like this, but all of these things are size of 10. And so I could say Y, and I don't care about the list anymore because I know that th those are all complete. And I can just take the Y. This is a function. Right, so that's going to be something like that. And so I need to go ahead and um, try this out. So I'm going to um, to start this application, and it's it's telling me that find complete rows is un is unused. But um, so now I can go ahead and and add some points. So I'm going to say points is equal to, um, and maybe I have. Uh, one, one, and two, one, or two, two, I guess. And then I'm going to do a four comprehension for uh, x is taken from one to ten. And I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, return x comma. So this is going to have a completed row basically and I'm going to have a three. Right? So this is these points which are not complete and these which are complete. Yeah, so this this is one, one, two, two, and then um, all ten of these. So this right here is a complete row. So I ought to be able to say, oh, and my function is, this is private, so um, that's not going to help me. So I'm going to recompile, and I'm going to say um, Tetris game. Dot find completed rows, and I'm going to pass it points. Okay, and so it comes up with a list of three. So this gives me the list of completed rows. So that's a that's a victory. This one works. So this is fine completed. So this I can make private again. I'm I'm relatively sure that it works. You know, if I wanted to be good and sure, well, yeah, sure, why not? Let's take this and take the points and then do another one of those. Four. Yeah, and now three and four are complete, so that's great. So, um, so now, you know, I don't need the find either. This can just be the complete rows, right? So I could take the, um, and actually, I can take. It probably wouldn't hurt me to take a game here, right? Because that's readily accessible. So I could say 
game game dot junkyard and pa pass that to map dot keys and then yeah so that's going to give me the complete rows so this is really a transformer which works great okay so that's the new junkyard so now we need to basically Now we be now we basically need to say complete complete rows. You know, I think that we probably ought to do a collapse rows. Yes, and this is the, so this is going to take the game just like that. So now So this is going to take a game and this is going to return also a game, but we're going to modify that game in some way. So that'll do all our work. And the first thing that we need to do is rows. So completed. So rows equals complete rows of the game. And then the two things that I'm going to do here are basically I'm going to um, collapse the rows and score the rows, right? So this is, I'm sorry, absorb. Absorb, and then I'm going to say rows and then score rows. Score, is there a score here? Increment score. Okay, so that is moving down. So scoring scoring the rows is another thing right here. So these two things are going to be reducers, right? And so def p absorb. Well, let's start to make these um, public so that we can we can play with them and test them. And this is going to take a game rows. The rows and this one is going to return a game that's um, translated in some way and then I also need to score rows and that's going to take a game and rows and this is going to return a game transformed in some way okay so now we really have two more jobs to do we need to collapse things such that um, such so that our rows are our rows disappear in the correct way, and we also need to score the rows. So, um, and I'm wondering if we need to sort if we need to sort these rows. But we could we could talk about that in a second. It's a good time to stop and take stock. Hey friends, Maggie here with Team Groxia. We are happy to have you joining us on our Tetris series. I'd like to invite you to come on over to Groxio, G-R-O-X dot I-O, and you can sign up for our newsletter over there and see what other content we have available for you and get some information about signing up for some training with Bruce Tate himself. We'll see you. So let's talk about the score. So I can, so really what I want is one row to give you 100, and then two rows to give you 200, three would be 400. So this is really just a power of two, right? So um, maybe, what is it? Um, one, so to, to the, so if I do pow, so math.power of one, of one to the second power, that gives me one, for yeah, so that's that's a great place to start. So if I have um, so a number of rows equals three, right? So I want it to say math dot pow number of rows, right? Or rows dot length and two, and then I can pipe that to round. And then I can pipe that to kernel dot times and um, 100, 
Where does that get me? Yeah, so that's 900. So, uh, no, 2 raised to the number of rows. 2 Yeah, there we go. And so then if the number of rows is four, we should get 1600. Yeah, so this is our formula. That's that's the score. So um, the score is pretty easy. So new score. And this is uh, it's going to be length rows, right? And then we're going to round that. Yeah, that looks good. And then I could say we're going to use map update syntax, and the game is um, is the score and new score. Okay. So this ought to allow me to detect completed rows with the collapse rows, right? So I grab the rows, and then I take the game, and then I absorb the rows, and then um, and then I score the rows. Okay, so the whole job now is to absorb the rows. So we're probably going to need to sort these things. So I think that what we're going to do is it's probably going to be easier to absorb uh, do this recursively, right? So if there are no rows, I don't do any work, right? So I just return game. And these probably need to be, these rows probably need to be sorted in some order. Well, let's think about that in a second. Okay, so but if we are okay, so so essentially, if we um, are absorbing game and a y. And then there's Y's. And this is gonna this is going to return. I'm only going to absorb a single row, right? Which is Y. So um, I need to think about how to do this. I need to say um, remove row y but then I need to recursively call on the rest um, so the um, so this is going to be game y and then I need to pipe that to absorb and then uh, so that's that's going to return a game and then now we just need to re absorb the rest of the y's so I think that that's it. All right, so now we need to do a def remove row, and I'm gonna take a game and a y. So basically all this is gonna do is take a junkyard and, um, and iterate over it. And um, if, so, so basically um, we're going to remove these points one at a time. So let's, let's do this. Let's say new junkyard. So I'm essentially going to map over, I need to filter out the ones that I don't want to keep. Um, and then I need to move everything up. And then I need to move everything else up. So let's see. So I filter out the rows. Game.junkyard. And then I'm going to do a map.filter. enum.filter 
And so what do I have in the junkyard? So that is points and they are in X, Y, and shape. So, and what's going to happen if, uh, so this is, and this is row. And I want to basically keep the ones where the, yeah, okay. So, and then this also has a shape, doesn't it? So I want to keep the ones where the um, y is not equal to a row. Okay, so now I have, now I've removed all the ones. Now I have to basically adjust it. So I'm going to say enum.map. And um, this is going to also take me, it's going to have f, so uh, x and y. And then it's also going to have the shape on the end. Like that. And so the function, what does that do? So that is going to say, if y is less than rho, I need to, I basically need, um, uh, so the new y is equal to, oh, how about we do a um, maybe move y and then I'll take the I'll take the row and the y or the y and the row okay so that will allow me to return the x comma maybe move y so that's my point and that's my shape that's the end and then I can take that enum dot into or I could actually pipe all that to map dot new right okay so um, now I need to code up this maybe move y so this is a private function it's a helper and so if um, so this is an x or this is a y in a row Right. Okay, so the problem now is that we need to decide if this, if we move it. And so the, the place that we move it down, so this is when y is less than rho. So it's actually above it. Then it's going to move down. Oh, what just happened there? I think I just hit fat finger. Okay. When y is less than rho, do, and that's going to be y plus 1. And then otherwise, maybe move y. And I don't really care what either one of these, actually I care what y is in the row. And that's just going to return y. Okay, so what's happening is that um, we're going to maybe move things based on where they are in the tree. So, so essentially, if something is up higher than the removed row, then um, then I have to then I have to basically um, move everything up. So, essentially, we're collapsing things one at a time. We're collapse we're collapsing the rows, and so I absorb all of the rows. And this is recursive, right? So if there are no rows to absorb, everything is good and we move on. If there is a, a row to absorb, then we basically, um, we're going to remove the row and then absorb the rest of the rows, right? So removing the rows means I have to basically erase the row and then keep moving everything else up. So um, let's see, this is gonna take a little bit to debug, but bear with me. Um, let's see if we compile. 
first. Yeah, so we're not we're not compiling yet. On line 80, we have a compile error. Yep, so this is, yeah, what's happening here is we have the X and then maybe move Y, and then we have the shape, and we haven't closed this out yet, so that's good. So let's recompile that. Okay, so new junkyard is unused, and maybe remove row. Okay, so we're doing something with the junkyard, but we're not actually... We're not, not actually um, setting that yet. So the new junkyard is here. So the new junkyard is there. And then I, what I want to return is game. Like that. Okay. Okay, so absorbing just removes the row from the game. Yep, that, I like that. So let's try this out. Okay, so it's saying the shape is unused, so we probably want to ignore the shape, right? And also, um, the variable x is unused in 77. I bet that's true. So 77 x, do we care about that? Yeah, we don't really care about that in the filter. And... Um, so the shape was unused in um, in line 77 also. Yeah, we don't care about the shape. We're just filtering out all the ones that are... Um, we're, we're actually going to... Actually, we could do enum reject. That'd be clearer, wouldn't it? We're rejecting the ones where the Y and the row are the same. Yeah. Okay, recompile. All right, so now we have something that's interesting to work with. And we can build, we could basically grab something like this. And we can build a junkyard out of this shape. Okay. So now I have a bunch of points. What I really need to do is build a graveyard out of that, right? So great, I'm sorry, junkyard. The junkyard is equal to the points enum.map and this is going to take a function of a point and then we're going to make the points all of the same shape right Undefined function shape. Yeah, so the shape, I need to basically pick one. So how about the O shape? Yep, that looks good. And then I can say a map.new out of that thing. Okay, so now I have a junkyard. And I could probably try to collapse, um, try to do a collapse. So let's see if we can remove a row first. So to see if this... Thing is working so I'm going to remove row um, how about three so that's one of our complete ones so so tetris dot game dot remove row in our um, oh, we don't have a game do we so game is equal to uh, And where the junkyard is this and the score is zero. Okay, so that looks good. And so now we ought to be able to say, uh, let's actually alias tetris.game. And then I could say, Game dot remove row and this is going to take a game and a three. Is there any way that this works? Okay, so what do we have? So we removed the row three. It didn't remove the row three all the way across, did it? Four four four. There's a three right here. So that's interesting to me. So it didn't remove the row three. So let's 
try to or IO inspect. So let's recompile. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm going to remove row three. Okay, so it looks like it did remove this. I bet that we didn't establish our um, new junkyard correctly. So the new junkyard is da 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 da. And then we did a map dot, and then we moved. So everything should have moved up. Maybe move. So, so this is. This is absolutely correct. And what we didn't do is we didn't move um, the Y. So when Y is, ah, this should be greater than row, shouldn't it? If Y is greater than move, row, then we move it. Actually, I believe that this is working. So what's happening is we started with a junkyard with all of these in it. And there was already, um, there was one thing at row two. And so this would move up to three. Um, this would move up to two. Yeah, so I think that we're working. So this moved to row two and this moved to three and everything else is four, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, that worked uh, um, near pretty nearly the first time. So the last thing that we need to do is to try it to do a, a game, an absorb. Game dot, let's see, collapse rows. Ah, look at that. They're all collapsed. And now everything is moved down past the collapsed rows into three and four. This thing is working pretty well. So I think that we might be ready to, to play our game. So let's um, recompile this thing. Uh, so that means we need to start the server. Let's see what's happening here. Game over, we're gonna play again, one. Okay, so we're breaking. Okay, what's happening here? So, key junkyard not found in bang. Okay, so this is gonna be easy to, um, to debug. So, at 99, At 99 game dot junkyard. Okay, so the complete rows, we're not doing this, this we're not passing it correctly. Complete rows game, and there's a junkyard. So the rows is, so this is getting called from line 64 right there. And so what it's telling me is that um, we're trying to pass in. So we're passing a junkyard into complete rows. So, or collapse rows. Ah. Yeah, there it is. So we're trying to collapse the rows right there. And what we need what we need to be doing is piping this into into yeah. So basically we need to set up the whole new um junk guard and then we need to collapse the rows um and that's going to score everything. Okay. So let's try this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so our game is over. So we didn't collapse any rows. That's great. 
But to play this game, I'm going to have to slow everything down, aren't I? So let's try the playing in the new game. And so the playing, remember that we have this tick. Half second is probably pretty good timing for me. So let's try to see if we can make this work. And so, okay, there's one. And let's see if we can grab another one here. I'll rotate that. <laughs> so my down key that's moving, can you see it's actually moving the, the location of the screen as well. So up, oh, this is gonna give me a complete row. So let's see, so look at the score, one something. So this should add 100 points, 200 and everything moved down. So we have a working Tetris game. So this has been a beautiful project to work on together. What we've done is built a live view application. And what you've seen is that we spent most of our time on the back end. And since we built our point as individual reducers, we built our game as a reducer, and we built our Tetromino all as reducers, Live View really rewarded us by making it an easy thing to layer one piece onto the next. So there were pieces that were complex, like when we were building the score, but it wasn't too bad because we were able to absorb all the complexity or just a little bit of complexity at a time. And so as we finished the application, all we were doing in the whole last section we spent a very small amount of time in live view and most of our time actually working on our reducers. And so we used a technique that was actually introduced in the book, in the, in the book Designing Elixir Systems with EJB, where we did data functions tests. And that really formed our core layer. And we were able to spend most of our time there and we used reducers in our Phoenix Live View, which became our boundary layer. And that's an excellent thing. This is Bruce and the dog on the floor for Groxio Learning.